Good morning, everybody. Jamie Thomas from Live at Work here, speaking 25,000 kilometers an hour. So, someone asked me the other day, hey, what, what's going on here? Where's Jamie going? So, what, what, what fella? I said, oh, where's your beard? I said, oh, I got rid of it. And I said, oh, why? I said, oh, it's a bit about raising awareness, really. And you know, like, how? And I said, oh, just about, you know, the little things that we do and use every day. And they said, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, like single use razors, like they, that's just another product. So when a few weeks ago, it's been a couple of weeks since I've shot a video and I apologize for that. I've had some, some um, mental health issues I've been dealing with, but that's all right. It's good. Always take care, self care. When you start to feel a little bit pressured, a little bit anxiety, come down, just disconnect from things that are causing you stress and re reset, recharge. So, um, uh, you know, the great Buddhist theory is nothing lasts. So, it didn't, so here I am shooting video. Anyway, so getting back to the video, they said, well, if you wanted to save razors, why did you shave in the first place? Why did you just grow a great big long beard? And I said, great point. I said, but what I wanted to talk about was changing, making the change from single use razors to single use, well, they're not single use razor heads, but those disposable razor heads to electric shavers. So I've actually got an electric razor, which is fantastic. Yes, it takes more material to make that razor than it does a single use plastic razor, but it lasts a lot longer. You look after it, care for it, buy a good one, have it serviced, it will last and last and last. So again, I guess what Way Up Butter is about encouraging is about making sure that every decision we make might not always be the cheapest decision, but it should be the one that's gonna last the longest. And what I mean by that is not just buying things cheap and then just you know replacing it, replacing it, replacing it. Um, buy something that's actually gonna last. So, you know, I was just saying before on Instagram that, you know, I watched a, a video and I thought it was about razors and I was like, oh, just believe here, what, what's he doing? Raising awareness. Raising awareness, can I just do that? Um, and it was actually about, but it was good, it wasn't about single-use razors, but I want to talk about those today. Um, but it was about, Jason was talking about uh, replacing um, plastic water bottles with aluminium cans of water. So again, you know, one of the things in what we talk about is that we do leave a footprint on this environment, but how deep is that footprint going to be? Walk as lightly as possible. So when you make a choice about a product or a purchase, it is about saying, well, how can what be mindful about what is the best choice I can make for the environment? And then, like I said before, it's not always the the, uh, the easiest, you know, the, the cheapest. So you know, thinking about that, that's the mindful stuff. So I guess what I finished off with the other day was my first, you know, my 100 way up tips that I'm doing in my life at the moment and look that's just one example and gee when i when i sat down i haven't written them down yet because i've just been a little bit busy but when i sat down and started to think about the changes that i've made already um i think probably for me i used to be um a clothes horse you know and i used to think you know again i used to be one of those people one of the classic examples is organic food and um you know, I used to think, no, it's too dear. Oh, you know, like a steadily in that. I grew up with organic food. My mum used to grow all our, all our plants and food, which was amazing, uh, organically. And um, so I was lucky to have a good start in life from a health perspective. Um, and I used to think, no, organic food's too expensive to buy cheap carrots and stuff like that. But then we wouldn't think nothing to go off and buy suits and shoes and, you know, aftershaves and you know, things that really didn't make me or gonna benefit me physiologically. I thought they would benefit me psychologically, that old saying, the suit maketh the man, um, doesn't really the behavior and the, the way the man looks after country, looks after the earth, what is what maketh the man. So, you know, thinking, changing that thinking in how you can do that. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't just wear, you know, if you're gonna buy new clothes, ask yourself, you know, do I do I need it? Often the the, the um, answer is no. Do I want it? Often the answer is yes. But then the question is, why do I want it? 
But more importantly, after I've finished with it, where's it gonna go? So I guess one of the biggest changes in my life has been my consumerism of the of clothing. And that is one of the biggest one of the biggest contributors to the destruction of natural resources. One of there's three that I can think of. Um, there's a lot more, but there's three main ones that I can think of. Uh, you know, is about me reducing my me buying mindlessly uh, clothes that I don't really need. They're just serving an ego. So taking my ego out of that equation has allowed me to be more lapper. I'm not creating an industry that's destroying it. So when I go and purchase clothes now, I'm more mindful of, you know, whether, do I need it? Do I want it? Why do I want it? And where's it going to go when I finish with it? Is it going to an op shop? Is it going to a cousin? Is this going to sit there and rot away? Thinking about where's it going to go? Um, I always use the example of Nike and Adidas. You know, uh, there's an app called Good On You. Download it now. It's a free app. When you go shopping, Google the clothing brand. Usually, I'll Google it on the, on the app. It actually, you can put the app, the clothing company in, and it will tell you whether that company is good for the planet or not. So, two two main ones I talk about: Nike and Adidas. I think Nike's four out of five. Uh, sorry, Adidas is four out of five. Nike's about two out of five. The last I looked, it could have changed, which means that. Adidas are trying to do more for the environment. Okay, so they're making sneakers out of recycled plastic from the ocean. So Sea Shepherd that protects the ocean, stops the whaling, protects the pollution. They are uh, in conjunction with not, uh, Adidas. They're making sneakers from recycled plastic. That's that's a start, you know. So if you're gonna be fashion, you can go and buy sneakers that are five star rated that you've never heard of. You know, so I think that it'd be great if you know some of the big movie stars and the basketball players were like, "No, Nike, I'm not getting 20 million for your sneakers because you're destroying the planet." Yes, out of that, I'll take your 10 million because you're looking after the country. So, your your buying power is what will create change. People say to me, "Ah, oh, but it's government that's destroying the planet. It's you know the big corporations that are destroying the planet." And I go, "Yeah, but we vote for the government. We as a collective." I, I don't vote for psychomaniac governments, so who are destroying the planet. Um, we vote for the governments and we buy those corporation products. So what I'm saying is, think about your choices. So clothing is one. Is one. Uh, the other one is, what's the other big one that I've made in my life? Yeah, food. I've talked about food. So the, the more opportunities I can... You know, I used to be a massive, massive, massive meat eater, and I still eat meat. Um, you know, if you really want to be way up, you would say, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go vegan or you know even vegetarian. Um, but you know, way up is about making choices, mindful choices, and it doesn't mean you have to go to the full extent of cloud floating and you know sun gazing to just exist. It's about saying, well, what can I do? What what can I do to still have the things that I I want to have? Not the things that I need, but the things I want to have. And how can those things that I want to have reduce my impact on the environment? So lessening the amount of meat that I eat. You know, because it does. It takes a lot of water and a lot of food grown to feed the, the animals. The other thing that you can do is eat game, local game meat. So here in Australia, we have kangaroo. You know, you go and buy kangaroo that's ethically sourced. That is good for the environment because kangaroos have very, very minimal impact on the environment. They're sourced from a wild source. So all those little things, you know, that you can do is reducing the amount that you use helps. So imagine if, I don't know, I think like 8 billion people, I can't even remember the number on the planet, all reduced that, that intake and thought about it. So, and the other one was, is is household products. I think um, I've stopped using uh, deodorant, um, not deodorant, I still use uh, natural deodorant, uh, but, you know, the... I used to be a big aftershave follower, and even when I wasn't shaving, just having that stinky smell on me is, is getting washed off of me and going down the sinks. So I'm really conscious now about all the household products. So we've swapped out a lot of our, all our cleaning products for bicarb water and the or vinegar. You know, natural products that are going to be that are going to go because it does. We don't think about where all our products go when we when we wash them down the sink. I don't wash my car anymore with soap. Um, you know, it's just a uh, bucket of bucket of warm water with a with a sponge, and you know, at home here, so that it I know because you know I used to think about it when I used to wash that car, you know, all that all that chemicals in that 
car wash, I watch it just go in the drain. Not even just just oblivious to that drain going into our waterways. Like those those kickstarts, and there's going to be heaps more I'm going to be talking about from the smallest of things right through to massive projects that we want to have happen um, to a totally off the grid uh, healing village that is biodynamic. You know. Um, growing our own vegetables, to uh, housing families, to stay there, to heal themselves, to have them off the grid. Like from little things from buying loose leaf tea and, and all the way through to healing villages. So I want to start that with just the three things that have been a massive impact in my life about the reduction um, of my impact and my footprint on planet Earth. So. The fresh jam is going to be around for a little bit, um, and you know I'll talk about using a electric razor. Um, you know, just for people who who like being clean shaven. I like a beard. It's coming into winter, um, but I just wanted to do it because I just think it raises awareness about our everyday practice. Um, followers who, um, yeah, who like the shaved look that want to. You know, every day, go and make a purchase. Go and, go and get a good quality with a good warranty. Don't be afraid to fork out that warranty and have it fixed. You know, not just throw it in the bin and buy another one. Buy a good quality razor, ladies and men, or if you want to go total tribal and just grow your body hair, that's fine, men and women. Um, but, you know, if you do shave and you want to shave, go, go electric. Um, people say, oh, but they use electricity. I'm like, yeah but you can get green energy as well, okay? Or better still, save even more money, get the place off the grid, or get a charger off the grid, you know? Go and buy a uh, solar panel and charge all the electric stuff, you know? Phones and that off the grid. So there's lots of things you can do, guys. I'm looking forward to having this conversation with you over the weeks. I'll talk to you next week, and I'll say goodbye. I'll say yadabi and muru. And a blue bar number 17,000. This should be working. Mm -hmm.